Hello, welcome back. Today we'll be doing an empty bezel bluebird. I got these really cute bird bezels from a company called Fire Mountain Gems and Beads out of Grants Pass, Oregon. I'll leave a link down below. When working with open bezel uh, charms, you want to make sure that you place the charm on a sticky surface to keep the resin from bleeding through. This is a very sticky tape specifically made for uh, bezel work and you need to make sure that you have it nice and secure down. Um, I give it a little rub on the table usually to make sure that all of the seals have been met around the piece. And I like to fold over a few edges because um, once you get your gloves on and you want to move your piece around a little bit to get a better angle, it's really difficult to unstick it from your gloves. Uh, so this is just a little trick that I do. Now that the piece is all nice and secure, I'm going to put it on this little tray that I made for my enclosed UV LED nail lamp. And let's get going. Safety up. Get some gloves on. So now that we've got the bezel secured to some tape, we need to mix up our color. This is a clear UV hard type resin from Let's Resin. It's the thin type, um, some blue alcohol ink to tint the resin and a little bit of blue mica powder to suspend in the resin to give it a little bit of interesting texture. I like using a thin type resin because it flows a little bit easier. It takes more coats, but it looks better. Make sure you mix up your resin and mica powder really well every time you use it. Uh, the mica powder tends to fall to the bottom of your dish. Um, so if you want to keep all of that really nice texture throughout, you need to kind of constantly stir it as it uh, settles to the bottom. I like to use a silicone tool to do this part of the resin work. It flexes a little bit and uh, gets into those cracks and crevices of the bezels really easily. It's also easy to clean off once the uh, resin is cured on it, just sort of peels right off and is very handy, like a little paintbrush, but with just a single tip. I'll continue working around the piece doing thin layers. This is the first of, I think, three layers to get it to the final look that we want. Um, if it's too thin, it'll be too brittle within the bezel. If it's too thick, it will overflow past the uh, beautiful silver work. Um, and we want to see the silver work also and not just be all covered in resin. What's really cool about the mica powder is you can sort of move the mica around a little bit as you're laying it out and sort of get a little directional with how the mica flows in the piece. So you can sort of indicate a direction of maybe feathers um, or how the two colors kind of come together where you can feather together um, the colors of the red breast and the blue. After you've got your first coat where you want to, kind of clean up the edges a little bit and slap it in the UV LED nail lamp. And uh, you can see it's a little translucent, which is really cool. But we still need to put layers on. And just continue building up the resin inside the bezel until you get it to the uh, height that you want and the thickness that you want. Um, so working in the layers as you go along. Also, it's it's a, opaque enough that if you do it too thick on the first go, it doesn't cure properly or it bubbles really easily. So this is a good way to mitigate some of the bubbling that might happen as you cure since UV resin cures from the outside in. And if you haven't used UV resin a lot, there is also a little bit of shrinkage that happens. So the work that you've done might pull away a little bit from the edges in certain spots as it levels itself as it as it's curing um, or as, as it bubbles a little bit as it's curing if it's too thick in spots. So uh, keep that in mind. Lots of layers is the best way to go. I'm just going in here with a little bit of touch up uh, where some of the resin maybe pulled away a little bit or isn't uh, level 
with the rest of the piece. So I'm sort of dabbing here and there and, and getting it all nice and even and making the ombre a little cleaner between the red and the blue. These little birds do come with little eyes already as part of the bezel, but I built up the resin over it a little bit, and I like adding a little gemstone eye to give it just that little extra sparkle. Now that you've finished the work on the front side, we can remove the tape to reveal the back see that some of the resin came off with the tape so we'll go back in and fill in where it maybe wasn't cured completely um, or where it pulled away from the bezel itself and level everything out get the ombre nice and clean on this side as well this is the back side but you know make it all look nice a little bit of a pro tip the lighting that you have around you makes a huge difference on how your resin works uh, when I first started doing this work, uh, not too long ago, actually this summer, um, I had a really great uh, LED light. And guess what? There's enough of a spectrum that it cures the resin. So as the pots sat on my table, um, I was inadvertently curing the resin before I was ready for them to cure. So I had to get rid of actually several pots of resin um, before I finally figured out what the heck was going on. I have since changed all of my lighting to standard incandescent lighting. I mean, we all want really nice bright light. So I have uh, three lamps around me now um, versus when I filmed this video originally, I still had my LED. So you'll notice like I'm covering my pots with my hand so I'm, we're not exposing them for too long. A Little bit of fire to get rid of any surface bubbles and it kind of heats it up a little bit and helps it flow a little level, which is kind of nice. And a little bit of cleanup work here. Nobody's perfect, people. I did uh, overflow a little bit in a couple spots. This is the back side, but I want it to be nice and clean um, for whatever final it's going to be. Like this bird could be put on a hairpin or this bird could be put on a bale to hang as a necklace. So um, I want to keep it all nice and clean. Here is an instance where I overfilled a little too much and as it cured it bubbled over. So just take a tool and gently remove uh, the overflow and get it as level as you need to. Give it a good clean with some just standard rubbing alcohol. This is a little trick I do with my rubbing alcohol. I stab three little holes in it so you don't have to remove the foil at all. It kind of controls the flow. And get my rag a little wetter to wipe down the excess that I shaved off. I do a little bit of finish work um, in the end to seal any of the sanded areas so it'll all be nice and shiny in the end. The final coat on these pieces is actually a little bit of UV nail gel. It's sort of the same material and it flows nicely on top of the resin and sticks well. So I dab a little bit in and sort of move it around um, to any places that I might have uh, scratched off some of the material and get everything nice and sealed up, uh, nice and shiny for the final finish. Clean up the edges so it doesn't cure on the beautiful metal and then uh, we'll be ready to go. bit of a final zap underneath the open UV LED nail lamp and there's our finished product. This little series of birds that I made I attached to some cute little hairpins 
You can also do other bird species. This is a little robin and a little dove. All of them with a little sparkly eye to make them super cute. And here's a picture of all of them together. Don't forget to leave a like for me and make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up to date on what it is I'm doing in my little studio. Thanks a lot. Bye.